The third type of radiation discovered by the Curies and everybody back then in the early 1900s, let's give Becquerel some credit, what's up Becquerel, was called gamma radiation. Before we go to gamma radiation though, I need to be a little bit more honest with you about beta radiation. When carbon-14 for instance, which is an unstable carbon produced in the upper atmosphere, and we'll talk more about carbon-14 because it's very, very useful for practical purposes. When carbon-14 undergoes beta minus decay, it goes to nitrogen, because remember we're gonna get one extra, oh sorry, this is supposed to be six, not see. It gets one extra proton, but one fewer neutron, which still leaves it with seven and 14. Now this is again following that line, remember we had that line on that graph, where the number of neutrons and the number of protons was equal. <clears throat> Here if we've got half as many protons as we do total nucleons, then we've got the equal number of neutrons, which is seven, so that's cool. But <clears throat> that's going to also give off an electron and an anti electron neutrino, which I don't want to talk about much, except to say that they're small and neutral. But this electron here and this nucleus, now see that nucleus is no longer just nitrogen 14, it's actually nitrogen 14 asterisk. And the asterisk means it's excited. Here, I'm gonna spell it right even. It's excited because it's not in its ground state. What did you just say, Doc? Yes, I said it's not in its ground state. Now that reminds me of this whole situation here where there's an electron and if it's not in its ground state, it can relax to its ground state, which is the source of all light that you see. That light comes from the relaxation of the electron being here and going to down here and the light has the energy, what are we gonna say? That the energy difference between these two states is H times the frequency of the light that's gonna come out right here. That's the frequency of the light right there. So that's cool, but the energies here are on the order of electron volts. These will be like three electron volts or two electron volts for atoms because they're electrons. But remember, when we're talking about neutrons and protons, we're talking about the strong force and that steps it up quite a bit. When we're talking about the energy of light that can come out from the relaxation of an excited nucleus, the strong force means that these energies are going to be on the order of millions of electron volts or at least hundreds of thousands of electron volts because this force is so much stronger than the electrostatic force that's governing this interaction right here. The strong force means that nuclear transitions between states are huge energy transitions. It also means that you've got things that are equivalent to electron shells for nucleons. There are nucleon shells and the nucleus builds up its number of nucleons in a beautiful shell-shaped pattern and there are, wow, I mean, there are even classes of nuclei, and ultimately this is forming the stability of nuclei and telling you which ones are stable and which ones are not because shells fill up in the same way that electrons use to structure that periodic table thing, right? Yeah, because of the electron stability, but over there in nuclear, well, I don't wanna talk about that anymore, goodbye. Look at this though, sorry the video's not over. This is excited nitrogen, and what will happen to excited nitrogen 14 is that it will decay into regular nitrogen 14, and the only way you can tell that it's decayed is a gamma ray shoots off. Gamma rays, ooh, let's see, they're not charged, they don't really have mass, they must be, well, what do you think they are? Light? Yeah. Oh, but their energy is so much more than x-rays. Remember those x-rays that we could get coming out of um, atoms sometimes through the electronic transitions? I'm talking about this guy being so much energy really big energy. It's so much energy that it's off the charts in terms of what you can see. It's way more energy than you can see, and it's even off ultraviolet and off of x-rays. It's over here in a section of light called gamma rays. Guess what? They're called gamma rays because they were the third ray to be studied in a magnetic field. Oh, do you think light bends in a magnetic field? Why don't you figure that out? There's not really else, anything else I have to say about gamma rays except that they're kind of dangerous. So if you've got an excited nucleus and it decays to an unexcited nucleus, you better get out the way.